I hope this video looks okay because I can't see the screen. For some reason, it's not showing up on my watch to audit. Real quick before I jump into the topic, in two days we'll be doing the live stream. Just a reminder for those who don't think about it or don't ask or don't know that we try to do it every Thursday. I'm currently planning on doing it on Thursday, so hopefully I'll see you guys there. So I got this question in response to the video about can't my employer uh, figure out where I am based on the uh, VPN or block VPN use or do all these things to make sure I'm not able to work from any location that they don't want me to work from. And while yes, in theory, an employer can go through a number of steps to try to make it difficult for you to be able to work from you know, a flexible location. There's a number of reasons why this doesn't really play out in practice. And, and while, yes, there are theoretical means by which this might be able to be done, uh, you're really moving into uh, an absurd range when you actually break down like how it would work. Now, this does require a little bit of know-how on your side as to how to make yourself impossible to detect. So that does need to be done and it may require a little bit of effort on your side, but these things are not difficult and people do this on a regular basis. And people do this on a regular basis uh, for reasons far different than working. Um, so if you've ever heard of countries that have national firewalls, uh, journalists working in war zones, anyone needing to get information to US news, news agencies that are often blocked by um, American powers to, to stop news from flowing through American agencies and so forth, uh, they have to work with really detailed means to get information through and hide where they're coming from. Because if they were unable to hide where they're coming from, uh, they would easily be targeted uh, in, in places where they are. Uh, we see this all the time in war zones, for example. Uh, or they would be uh, blocked. If you could detect that information was coming in from a place you didn't want information to come in from, you would simply block that locality entirely uh, or detect that it's coming from a certain person and block it. So the uh, inability of governments to block block these things when they have complete control of the uh, technology infrastructure and so forth, indicate that you know, companies can't realistically do it either. They don't have as many resources, either financially or access to as many things at uh, the political level. They can't just leverage uh, the ability to walk into the ISP and say, block this thing at, at the most fundamental level. They have to work at arm's length, really. So uh, if they can't do it, you definitely have some flexibility. There are means by which, now of course when we're talking about journalists, they may just be trying to get a message through, right? There's been this event has happened in this place and someone needs to, they can send a text message through Signal or something. So that's a bit different in those cases, but the, the fundamentals are still the same, that there's ways to obfuscate where you're coming from. So when it comes to these types of things, um, first of all, we have to look at practicality, right? From a legal perspective, can a company do these things? Often, no. They'd be skirting the law to try to detect where you are. Not always, but often. So that's the first thing. You're probably protected. They would be bringing a lot of risk uh, on themselves to try really hard uh, to prove that you're somewhere, especially if you're doing the job. Otherwise, you would have automatic proof that you were being harassed for your locality and that it violated whatever rules they were using for uh, the job, right? If they can't measure that you're not doing the job otherwise, uh, showing that you were not in the location that they wanted you in would undermine their legal position itself, right? Because the only time a business can really do those things is when they can make the claim that it somehow makes you better at doing your job. And so if they can't detect it without uh, actually knowing where you are, it means that that is false. So they don't want to do that. They don't want to put themselves in a position of guaranteeing that you can prove that they were violating your rights uh, as an employee in the United States or wherever uh, by exposing that. So, so that's the first thing. And from a practical perspective, none of this makes any sense for an, no legitimate employer would ever, cannot, you cannot by definition be a legitimate employer and care about location in this way. Now, obviously, like I mentioned in the other video, something like a uh, defense contractor who has legal obligations because of that type of security, that's a different matter. And that's a government that cares. But as a business, you can't care. It is fundamentally anti-business to care. It means you have an emotional response that is taking precedence over the profitability of the business. Now, if you're a private company and it's your own money that you're putting at risk, you're allowed to do those things but it does make you a non-legitimate business. It means you're a hobby, not a business. But if you're doing this with public funds, if you're a publicly traded company and doing this, you are breaking the trust of your, uh, your investors and you are breaching your SEC regulations. You are not allowed to do things just because it satisfies your personal dislike of a certain country or region or language. You have to do what's right for your shareholders. 
And I know that companies get away with an awful lot because there's an awful lot of corruption out there. There's a lot of courts who don't understand these things. But these are risks that companies would take, and there's no logical reason, right? You're assuming when we talk about these things that you're talking about evil people who are willing to sabotage their businesses for personal emotional gain and financial loss. Of course, that happens all the time. But that's what we're talking about. So it's important framing. But when we're talking about trying to do this, the level to which someone would have to go through to reasonably try to block you and not expose themselves in some way that would give you a strong legal position is quite an absurd level. Now, you know, you're talking about do they hire private investigators to spy on you, all kinds of things, right? And I've worked at places that have private investigators, but they would never take a risk of complaining about where you were working from as long as you're getting the, the job done. They would just spy on you there too, right? Because they're concerned about making money, not about blocking certain countries from being good places for you to work from. I don't even know what the goal would be of a company. So I think there's a lot of assumption that companies care, and, and I know that this is somewhat true, but there's a huge assumption that companies will go through unlimited financial disaster in order to just make life bad for employees and harm countries that they don't like. And that's a weird position for anyone to assume any company to be in. The amount of work that companies would have to do every day to keep all their people from going places that they it just it doesn't make a lot of sense so let's talk about the technology here first of all if you tried to do any of these things you would automatically block people from just traveling normally for vacations and we talked about that in the other video that would be really problematic suddenly no one from your company is able to be reached while they're on vacation it would give an opening for anyone who wanted to to just be like sorry the technology doesn't work i didn't bother bringing a phone or a laptop or looking to answer because you block me right you the last thing companies in America want is people to have an excuse to never answer their phones when they're away. Not something they want. So you generally aren't going to see this built in. The other problem is that they really can't tell where you are. They would be blocking sometimes people trying to legitimately work from where they're supposed to be working. And that would be super counterproductive. When I lived in Texas, I constantly was being detected as working from Toronto. When I lived in New York City, I was always showing as working in London or Germany. So the, the technology isn't that solid because IP addresses don't actually have a location tied to them. That's a myth. Now, there are assumed locations. There is likely locations, but there isn't a solid location. So you can't just uh, say that that's where someone is located based on uh, that information. It doesn't work that way. And so you could end up with uh, really bad results in false positives. Now, of course, you also get false negatives, so it goes both ways. But what you're able to do is use a VPN as one mechanism to, to redirect your traffic. And someone said, well, can't they just block VPNs? The answer is no, you can't block a VPN. VPNs, by their very nature, cannot be detected. So if it was detectable, it wouldn't be a VPN because VPNs are completely transparent to the data on either side. That's the nature of tunnels and what makes them powerful. Uh, so a, a real VPN that is outside the mechanism you're using is in undetectable. Now, what most people are assuming when we talk about VPNs is they add a lot of assumptions to that, and that's where there's mistakes, right? They start thinking, well, we must be talking about Surfshark or NordVPN or some little tool we use for tricking Netflix. And in many cases, that would be adequate for many jobs, and they would have no idea that you were doing that. I would say 99% of jobs would not know. 99% of companies that tried to detect where you were would not know that you were using those. So that would work in many cases, but it wouldn't work in all. That's, you know, that's the assumption that we can just use things like that. When we're talking about getting around the everybody, then we're talking about that last 1% of companies that care. We're down to the 0.01 of all companies whatsoever, but assuming we get to that level, you can always use a VPN of your own on your laptop or desktop or whatever. And that would be so much less detectable than something like a NordVPN or a, or a uh, Surfshark, for example. However, in all these cases, your employer could find a way to block you putting a VPN onto your machine. Okay, understood. That would, again, be absurd, but I do know employers who do this. So this, this does exist. Now, I know this because I work in the IT space. I work with thousands of companies so that one or two of them do this. And they don't do this for this purpose. They do it for other purposes. But, okay, so that makes sense. So, again, how do we, how do we fix this? Well, 
At this point, what you need is a VPN that is external to your computer. And that's where there's nothing your business can do to get around this, except for actually providing, and this is what they did 30 years ago, providing a direct wire link to you so that you do not connect to the internet, but connect directly to the company. And so you have to be physically attached to them. No one's going to do that because the cost per person would be something around $10,000 a month or higher. And you'd be super inefficient and risky. It would cause all kinds of problems. It makes no sense whatsoever. That's the way you would have to do things to try to work around this. In a practical sense, no one's going to do that. They expect you to connect over the internet. We all assume that that's going to be true. Well, once you do that, they're not providing your firewall. They're not providing your internet connection. They're not providing the switches, the wires, the cabling, the house, the plugs, none of that. So putting a VPN device outside your computer, and if you have a desk phone, like I do, you might be able to see it behind me somewhere, that desk phone connects over a network connection as well. Have those things plug into a physical device that provides a VPN outside of your laptop, but before it gets to the internet. So in that case, you can have your work equipment at home, phones, uh, cell phones, anything you want connected over that and only over that. And they never see the internet. They connect over the VPN which they can't see either. They are 100% unaware that they have a VPN between them and the internet. They get routed into the United States. You can then put a device or software somewhere in the United States of your choosing. So it can't be listed as a VPN site because it's your location. It just looks like a house for someone. And then they exit into the US. That's an exit node is what we call that from that location. That's completely yours. Yes, this takes a little bit of work. It's not a big deal though. Like yes, a little bit of effort to set up Yes, you have to know a little bit about it, but there's loads of people who do this all the time for lots of different reasons, and it's very effective, and know your business cannot detect it. You do this, and your laptop, your phone, they are in the U.S. From every reasonable possible perspective that any business is going to look at, they're going to see you as being in the U.S. or Canada or wherever you decide to have that exit node. This is crazy powerful and gives you a lot of stability. So a little bit of work, yes, but we're talking about the most extreme cases where you're talking about super paranoid, horribly evil companies that hate you, hate profitability, hate their investors, but those people are out there. Should you get into that scenario, even then you have a level of protection that almost guarantees that no matter what level of hatred from a technology perspective, they're not gonna be able to do anything to you. And reasonably, if someone's going to this level, they're just going to make you go into the office and then they're not going to offer you a remote work job. Some other company is going to hire you and make more money by getting better people at lower cost than this company, whatever, right? So there's a certain amount of practical that comes along with all of this. There's also a certain amount of, it's just technologically unreasonable to assume anyone is going to be able to go to that level. So I know it's things that people worry about all the time. And the question was asked, so I wanted to address this pretty quickly because it is a hard to describe but when you actually look at the factors, I don't know of any company ever that would actually be able to get around some really simple, basic uh, limitations. And I learned a lot about this 26 years ago when we used to do LAN gaming and a lot of video games, not for intent reasons, but would not work over the internet at all. They couldn't work over the internet. And using these kinds of techniques are how we took old games that didn't know about the internet and couldn't talk on the internet and made them work all over the world transparently with no problem at all. That's an extreme level of not even able to function over the internet, let alone detecting specific cases on the internet to block. And if you can work around it that easily to the point where we sometimes would work around it accidentally because we didn't even realize we had put these things in place because they're common. Anyway, that is how you can work around the most extreme circumstances. So that specific issue shouldn't be a problem for you, even if you have to use physical phones on your desk.